What kind of people your fans are? Um, very diverse. Um, I do kind of pride myself to say that there is a lot of young people in the audiences. Also when I play core classical shows, which is unusual. But um, very proud actually that, you know, it does work that way because classical music normally, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to connect to young people. And I think the wonderful thing with crossover, you could really use it to, to kind of build, you know, a bridge and make it more interesting, accessible, not interesting, because it is actually quite interesting music. Just, you know, it, you don't see it any, anywhere anymore. And I think there is a little bit of hesitation with young people. Do you have some funny memories about your fans? <coughs> oh, quite a few. Tell me something. <laughs> How late is this program airing? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, there, there's certainly some some strange incidents, some positive as a, you know, also negative, but m mainly positive. You know, I have very, very nice uh, fans who are very supportive and who always travel. Mo most of them, not most of them, but a few of them are entirely supportive. They travel to the US when I tour over there or to the UK or through, you know, Southeast Asia. So um, I really have to admire their, uh, you know, um, support. And what's your best memory of your music career? Um, I don't really think of uh, the past. I'm not really somebody who's like reflecting on yesterday or two days ago. I'm more of a let's see what we're doing today kind of person. So you don't have any uh, goals for the future either? No. Just I mean, today. I have plans, which are, you know, I'm, I have a very structured schedule. And of course, I work towards those, those plans. But it's not like I, uh, you know, set out to be there like in one year and everything is... Uh, I'm pretty planned through, but no like real goals. Let's see what happens. You have concerts with big orchestras. Yeah. How is it? Well, depends on on uh, the orchestra. Depends on how you get along with the conductor. Um, mostly positive. I'm sure there's always, you know, the one or the other experience where you, you didn't really get along with the conductor, but that's more rarely. Do you also perform alone? Uh, just by myself. Yeah. I do a couple of concerts like that. I do prefer though actually uh, playing with musicians, like in an ensemble. It's just more more fun. I feel. Are there any artists you want to play with? Um, from the classical side or crossover or pop R and B. Um, well, I'm sure there there are many really good musicians, and I think being a musician, the most fun is to 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 work with people. I mean, just <laughs> playing by yourself is like masturbation. You know, it kind of works <laughs> well, but. You know, in the end, it's not really the full thing, so, sure. <laughs> what else have you done in your life than play a violin? Um, what else have I done in my life besides playing violin? Yeah. Pretty much nothing. Like, this is what I'm good at, and I know, uh, luckily, what I'm not good at and try not to do it. <laughs> so what are you doing when you are not playing? <laughs> I eat and I sleep. The rest of the time is pretty much set aside for practice or work. <laughs> okay. And what other things are important for your life than music? Um, for my music or for my life? For your life. Well, I pretty much live music all day. I mean, that's that's who I am. And as long as I'm healthy and I can do, uh, you know, I can have the time to prepare myself properly and, and work with people I you know I enjoy working with I think that's perfect I don't need anything else that sounds good and I have questions from your fans yeah. Katie wants to know what happens to all the items the American fans throw on stage and what was the most intriguing thing you received from a fan um, normally they end up in the tour bus um, somebody always collects them and then of course, the stuff which is eatable, we eat. The rest, you know, normally gets sent sent to my place. 
And uh, the most interesting thing, somebody gave me like, I think in, we played in New Jersey, and it was a little freaky because it was like a little tiny baby with a violin in the ha in its hand, and I thought, uh, uh, I'm not entirely sure I'm, I know where that is coming from. Okay, and Taman asked if you are working on another album, and when will that be available? Um, we're doing a core classical album in uh, recording in London in July. I don't know when the release date though is. Probably end of the year, beginning of next. And Barb asks about your experience of making the fifth video, and are there any more videos planned? Uh, experience. It was freezing. We were uh, in both ways, outside and inside, because the hall we were recording in, in Long Island, the heating system collapsed the night before, so uh, it was as cold inside as outside, and it was January in New York. So I actually got sick, like after the first day. It was two days shoot, and the experience was uh, nice and also not so nice because obviously getting sick is not much fun. Yeah, sounds awful. Uh, Michel asks, who inspire you the most musically? Um, I guess situations. Um, it's not really that you can pinpoint them, but. I'm in a, in, in a place, in a wonderful place, where I get to meet a lot of people, a lot of nice people, a lot of not so nice people. I think just encounters with people are the biggest inspiration, you know, because everybody somehow uh, reacts uh, an emotion, and music is in the, in a way a language, and so you gotta use those emotions in order to kind of tell a story. Thank you and have a nice time in Finland. Thank you, I certainly will.